Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Rox Berkey. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. Hey, good evening. I'm Rox Berkey. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where we always love to talk to authors. Today, I'm honored to have with me Larissa Matushka. Did I do that right? You did it close enough. It's a hard name. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful name. Thank so, you. You know, it's just wonderful to be able to have you here. And, you know, you have a fabulous background. So let's just dig right into it. Great. Now, one of the things I want to bring to the attention of our listeners is that you just started back to school because you're a teacher. Yes, we actually started today was our first day. So we're a very small school in South Texas and our kids were thrilled to be back. So it were was they? a good day. Oh yeah. Awesome. They were very excited to be in the general populace with their student friends again. So now you teach one of my favorite subjects and one that really lends itself to your writing, right? Yes. High school English and I have a creative writing class. This year I have four upper level Englishes um, and one creative writing. So it's great for me. I'm absolutely living the dream. Now I know that you're a Christian author and that that's a really strong focus with you and your faith is very important. And I also know that you grew up in Roswell, New Mexico. Yes. Transitioned to Texas. How has that transition been for you? Okay, so first of all, I have to say that God has a huge sense of humor. When I grew up in Roswell, we were very close to a mountain called Ruidoso. And we used to get so frustrated because when we went to the cabin in Ruidoso, there were Texans everywhere. And we used to say these darn Texans don't have their own mountains, so they have to come invade ours. Um, yeah, be careful how arrogant you are because it comes back to you. Because <laughs> when we moved here to Texas, we live in South Texas now, um, my children were two and four at the time, and they had never seen snow. So I called my mom said, hey, can we spend Christmas at the cabin so the kids can see snow? Of ah. course, we laugh about that every time we think about snow in the mountains because my mom was like, it's what you get for being arrogant. Hopefully, I'm a little more humble. Well, we all grow up, right? It just takes time, right. kind of a work in progress as people go. Yes. You enjoyed reading a lot. Did you ever think when you were a child reading J.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, that you were actually going to be an author? Not at first. Um, what inspired it was, I think, a stroke of desperation on my mom's behalf. When I was in middle school, um, I believe it was the ABC Broadcasting Network, had a cartoon show on Saturdays where they made books into cartoon, uh, movie-length cartoons. And one day I had watched it and I was just so disappointed. Um, again, we were, I was young and a bit judgmental. Um, and I thought that the story was flat and boring. And I was complaining to my mom who was in the kitchen. And she said, then write a better one. And I was like, oh, okay, I will. Of course I didn't because I was only in junior high, but that's what started me really wanting to pursue writing. So uh, about seventh grade, I knew that was what I wanted to do. And I actively um, began thinking of it as a career. So when you went through school and you, you know, did your classes and you obviously were a good student, especially in the English and creative writing side, when you finally got to, to college, what did you focus in? Okay. So well-meaning adults, whenever I told them that I wanted to be a writer, would smile very nicely and say, that's fantastic, dear, but how do you plan to eat? Um, so I very much had the impression that I needed a job that brought in money. And I happened to love the stars. When I was younger, I wanted to be a permanent resident on the first permanent space colony. 
Wow. So I figured if I can't do writing, then I'll earn money by going into astronomy. Um, this was kind of naive on my part because I had great grades in English. I had, I was placed in honors freshman composition in my first semester in college, but my math skills leave a bit to be desired. Um, my, again, the same semester in college, I barely passed remedial college algebra the third time I took the final. You were mm. up, to, you were, yeah, you were allowed to take it up to three times, which was good for me because I passed by one point the third time. What we didn't know at the time, but found out later is I tend to flip my numbers around. Oh. Um, so if a number is 315, I may interpret it as 351. Um, since we figured that out, math and I get along a lot better. But at the time, I figured I obviously was not meant to be a scientist. So I went home for Christmas break, just stricken because I didn't know what to do. Um, the only thing I was good at was English. Um, so had a heartfelt conversation with my parents where they rightly expressed concern that they wanted to make sure that I could support myself. Um, and I literally just said, this is the only thing I'm good at. Fortunately, especially in today's cultural economy, um, reading and writing are the high, most highly sought at are sought after business skills yep. and every job I got I received because I had an English degree so it worked out well there you go I mean that's pretty exciting reason to go ahead and focus on English plus you're a teacher so when did you decide you wanted to also teach <laughs> that one I was forced into and I say that jokingly I never wanted to teach um, I was not a lovely child in high school. I had, um, my top jaw used to fit inside my bottom jaw because of a genetic disorder, like literally like that. Um, and because of that, I was severely uh, malnourished. So I was very skinny. I had very thin, scraggly hair. I had glasses that were super thick. Um, and teenagers can be particularly harsh. And I wanted nothing to do with teens by the time I graduated. Um, then I grew up, I had my own kids, we moved here. And um, I had a friend who homeschooled her kids and she had a few friends who also homeschooled their children. And she asked me to teach a creative writing class. And my first thought was, no way, I am not standing in front of a room full of teenagers like a target. And she knew how to get me to come around because she was like, you can teach whatever you want and they're good kids. And if they're not, their parents will get after them. <laughs> so I conceded, yeah. So I conceded to one semester and it went really well and I did enjoy the kids. Um, and so they asked me to come back and very quickly I was teaching five classes. Uh, wow. for the homeschool co-op because for some, yeah, for some weird reason, uh, adults don't believe that they can teach high school English, um, which uh, I find mind boggling, but don't ask me to teach high school math. It would be a, a bad situation. That's a joke around our school. <laughs> um, so I ended up with five classes and I thought this was good because they're all homeschool kids. I know their parents were really good friends and um, I've gotten to know them, so I can handle this, this is fine. Um, and then I found out the local private school needed a high school English teacher, and I laughed because I was very busy in the community, I was already teaching homeschool, and I had two children that I was very determined to stay home and take care of until they were in elementary school. Um, but I went ahead and I applied, because my husband and I, the budget was tight, and I promised not to sabotage the interview, <laughs> but I did walk in and I said, I don't have a teaching degree. They said, that's okay, we're a private school. Do you have a degree in the class we want you to teach? I said, yeah, I've got that. They said, great. So three interviews later, they put my name on the door and I got my first classroom and I now absolutely love teens. They are my uh, second favorite group of people outside of literary people my age. So that is a perfect place. We are actually 
at a point where we need to stop for a moment and hear from our sponsors. So stick around and please come back. The Fire in the Rock by Charles Henderson Norman was named to Kirkus Review's list of the best books of the year in 2016. It is the story of the Exodus as told by Zipporah, Moses' widow, long after the fact, but it is not a conventional Bible story book. It will challenge non-believers, but it will challenge believers as well, with a human perspective on a story that you have never heard. Available on Amazon as a paperback, ebook, or audible. Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Randy James, independent voiceover producer in the Dallas, Texas area. Available to write and record a 30-second commercial, much like the one you're hearing right now. It's a great way to help increase awareness and exposure to your book title. It's easy to do. Simply call me and we'll brainstorm on a few ideas. And in a few hours, I'll whip something up and send you a digital file ready to use. Remember, call or text me, Randy James, at 214-762-1942. Welcome to IndieLector.store, an online bookstore where the discriminating reader can find award-winning books. IndieLector.store is not a big corporation, so it can give up to 80% of the sales directly to the author. Help us support them by buying a great book at IndieLector.store. Join us for the 6th Annual Authors Marketing Event in Granbury, Texas on July 23rd to the 25th, 2021, where authors share ideas and learn from the professionals over a two-day weekend. Receive your book marketing certification from the only organization in the world that has been doing it for five years, Authors Marketing Guild, a membership-based organization that supports authors from around the world. Learn more at ame.authorsmarketingguild.com. Sponsored by IndieLector.Store, a bookstore that pays authors their fair share. Hello, I am the author and poet Denise Bryson. I am the author of The Things That Cross My Mind, Love's Reality, both in book and audio form. I am also noted as one of the best poets of 2011. I have two new projects coming up. One is the Blinky series, where Blinky tells us all about our coins and our bills for our children. I also have a book coming out called Say Ye. It's quotes from Denise Bryson. Just inspirational and that will help you along the way. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio, and we are excited to continue the conversation with Larissa Matushka. So we're going to go with Larissa from now on, all right? Sure, that works for me, as long as it's polite. Of course, <laughs> of course. So I want to talk, talk now about your books. I mean, I know you're a teacher. I know you're good in English. I know you love to read and you love fantasy. So tell us a little bit about book one, The Healer's Rune. Okay. Um, the Healer's Rune is a spin on traditional fantasy motives. So when I was growing up in the 80s, a lot of 80s fantasy was based around the idea that the worlds were populated with elven type races and then humanity came along, um, took them over and conquered and became the dominant race. Um, I loved fantasy growing up and I wanted to do something a little bit different. So in the healer's rune, there are several fey type races and one of them has taken over and is has um, subjugated humanity. So humanity is the, the race on the bottom and it's gotten to the point where the dominant race is bent on revenge and wants to completely eradicate humanity from the uh, land which is known as Saren Row. So I wanted to play on that trope. So the cover is fascinating. Thank you. There are a lot of things that keep the eye moving and flowing as you're going through that cover. Um, did you help design that cover? No, I actually got very, very lucky with the designer that my publishing house chose. She submitted, she, most of her work is Renaissance romance, so uh, Regency romance. So she submitted her first cover and it had a very Regency romance feel. 
Um, and so I directed her to my Pinterest board that I have. I have a, a concept board for each of the books. And she gave this one second time through. Um, the only thing we had to change was right there that Raven features prominently in the story. Yep. He wasn't there at first, but there was a cloud that looked like a Raven. Um, and so I thought that would be a great idea. I asked her if she could pop it in and there we go. Yeah, it's fascinating. So when was this book released? This book was originally released in 2016. Um, my publisher, Brimstone Fiction, was an imprint of a larger company known as Lighthouse Publishing of the Carolinas. In 2017, Brimstone went independent, so it was re-released. Oh, very nice. Yes. So who are you targeting from an audience perspective with this book? Is this purely young adult or where, where are we at? We're actually in a genre that kind of started but never took off known as new adult. Sabine, the story's protagonist, is in her early 20s. So she's right there on the border between young adult and adult. Um, I designed the book to have appeal to both age groups because when I was in junior high, or not junior high, in high school, I was found 90% of the time in the adult section of the library because I had already burned through everything in the, in the children and youth sections. So I want the series to be um, a good read for both categories. Okay, and apparently it is. Now, I'm, I'm really quick, but I noticed this is book one. Yes. Saga. So yes. that tells me there has to be a book two. There is a book too, and hopefully it will be up for pre-order by the time this interview goes live. It is due out any day, um, and book 2.5 is almost written. Okay. So there will, 2.5 is a companion novel. It takes place uh, alongside of book two, but it has a few of the other characters that people wanted to learn more about from book one. Um, the main series, books one, two, and three, are a single third-person perspective. Um, book 2.5 has three uh, perspectives from three of the most popular characters who aren't Sabine. That's interesting. So why did you decide to do that 2.5 that way? Because I could not figure out what to do for book three. <laughs> 2.5 just kind of fell in my lap. I was driving to a wedding of some former students trying to figure out how to get book three to start. All of the ideas that I had just were not right. Um, and in the 15 minutes it took me to finish the drive to the church, 2.5 came fully formatted from start to finish into my lap. So those things don't happen often, so I was quick to jump on that. Very nice, that's very exciting. So what is the name of book two? Book two is The Guardian Prince. Um, the first book is named after Sabine, who's the protagonist. The second book is named after Aodin, e who's a secondary main character. And then the third book will be The, the Blind Queen, um, who's named after another secondary main character. So each one is named after an important character. That's very interesting. So do you have a, a sneak peek of the cover we can look at? Oh, yes. The two point book two is The Guardian Prince, and it looks like this. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, my cover designer is absolutely fabulous. This one was a first try, and everybody fell in love with it right away. We were so captured by the, the striking red themes. Oh, it's yeah. gorgeous. Very nice. Okay, so that's gonna come out soon. So it'll be here in time for fall and Christmas order yes. people. Very nice. Yes. Um, so who who's your biggest fan right now when you're when you're in the process of writing? Is this your former students? Is it your children, your husband? So there's an adage uh, among Christians that prophets have no honor in their own home. My no. students couldn't care less that I'm a published author. They just want to survive their classes. Um, I do have my biggest fans are from my two target age groups. There are two 
um, women who are older than 35. And then I have two girl, two young ladies who are in the new adult section. They're 19, 20, 21. So they're my four most uh, avid fans aside of my mom. Uh, but we all know moms are biased. Yeah, I get that. Moms don't count for that. <laughs> right. Okay, so do they read them? Do those fans read them as beta readers or? Yes, they actually, I have alpha and beta readers. Mm -hmm. So those fans read both. Um, and it's really interesting because in book two, one of Sabine's uh, character traits is that she doesn't believe she's worthy of being loved. So she's decided she's just gonna be completely independent and she's off-putting to people. Mm -hmm. um, in book two, my alpha readers told me that that came across way too strong. They said she was mean and they didn't like her and they really helped me change the book to where her weakness came through without being off-putting. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was really a uh, good insight. That's good. So you can get that kind of feedback and honest feedback from people. That's nice. Yes. That brings me to a point when you, when you're talking to young people that maybe want to be authors, do you have a, maybe one or two primary recommendations that you want to make to them? Um, as far as resources go or as far as advice? Uh, advice. Okay. My advice is it's a different uh, business atmosphere than it used to be. No, um, authors don't just write anymore. If you want to be successful at uh, getting your book out to the public, you also need to learn how to market. Um, and whether you're published by a traditional big publisher like HarperCollins or you're indie published, you still are responsible for a bulk of the marketing. So you need to decide, do you want to write because you like to write or do you write because you want to be read? And if you want to be read, you need to come to peace with the fact that you've got to market. That one took me a lot of time to get together with. <laughs> Even if you're part of a big publishing house, you still have to market these days? Really? It, yes, exactly. Because they just don't have the budget to reach um, like you need to be reached. When you're the hot topic, they pour all of their attention into you. But when they move on to the next hot topic, it's up to you to keep your book alive. So yeah, you want to be uh, willing to learn how to market. So do you think at this juncture you have, you have succeeded with the marketing? I am still learning. Um, I am constantly researching and finding new resources. I just found another resource the other day and um, was very happy to see that I finally have all the right elements for a social media platform. Now I can work on the next aspect of marketing, which is um, getting my email newsletter built up. So I'm constantly learning. There you go, we all are. So with that, we're gonna take a short break and hear from our sponsors. And, and please stick around, we'll be right back. World War II, the Holocaust and a mysterious package arrives in New York from Germany 40 years after the war, involving three families across the oceans. Mystery, intrigue, and correcting the most heinous of wrongs. This is just part of the story Michael Newman tells in his book, Between These Walls. Available in Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or at IndieLector.store. Buy it today and enjoy this thriller of a novel. Thank you for watching or listening to Indie Beacon Radio. Our sponsor, IndieLector.store, is the only bookstore that pays authors their fair share for book sales. Help authors to succeed and enjoy a great book by supporting them at IndieLector.store. Enjoy a 10% discount with coupon code SHOPPER20 at IndieLector.store. Coupon valid until December 31st, 2020. That's IndieLector.store, coupon code SHOPPER20. Dear Texas is proud to present the Lone Star Festival on May 29, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
where Texas authors, artists, and creatives come together for a Texas-sized event at the Seguin Coliseum, Seguin, Texas, sponsored by Indie Elector, Authors Marketing Guild, and the City of Seguin, a perfect event for those who enjoy the creative arts. Register for your free tickets and prizes at lonestar.bookfestival.network. Authors Marketing Guild is a membership-owned organization designed to help authors succeed and learn how to better market and sell themselves and their books. Join us at AuthorsMarketingGuild.com and receive so many benefits you'll wonder why you didn't join sooner. That's AuthorsMarketingGuild.com. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now... Here is your host for today's show. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio, where he, we're here with Larissa Matushka, and I am so glad that we learned about your first and second book and 2.5 yes. in the series coming out. I want to kind of refocus a little bit now, because you started talking about social media, where are people going to be able to find you on social media? I am most active on Facebook. I have a, a group page. Um, I switched from a business page to a group page because I, that allows me to directly connect with more people more often. That uh, page is Larissa Matushka, fantasy author, and it is a group. I'm also very active on Instagram, which is also Larissa Matushka, L-A-U-R-I-C-I-A, M-A-T-U-S-K-A. There you go. So you do Instagram a lot. Those are your two primaries, then Facebook and Instagram? Yes. I also have an email newsletter where I give book reviews, um, little fantasy sightings that I find on the internet, and exclusives. For example, the rough draft chapters of book 2.5 are released on the exclusive section of my website um, one chapter per month. Oh, so you can nice. sign up for my newsletter at the bottom of my website uh, landing page. There's a sign up form right there at the bottom. Uh, the website is also larissa matushka.com. Very nice. And where are your books available for folks that want to, to grab them? Can they just buy them from your website? You can, if you go um, to the page specifically for the Guardian Prince or the um, Healer's Rune, um, each page has links to where they're available. You can get them through Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, you can buy them from the publisher. Um, so there are a few different outlets. Well, good. Now, you know, I mean, we've all been kind of, um, you know, sheltering at home. Yes. COVID. And so I don't know about you, but are you anxious to get out and kind of do some, you know, book signings or book clubs or? Yes, actually, I am ready to be interacting with people again. I have a couple events coming up. I have one in September, one in um, November, and I think one in October, I can't remember. There's a um, calendar and events section on my website under the About Me tab, where you can go to find out where I'm gonna be if you would like to meet with me. I would love to see you guys there. So if people subscribe to your newsletter and go out to your website, then, then you'll be able to um, uh, direct them on where yes. you might be, okay? Yes. Okay, so I, I'm seeing that you're going to be on Galveston Island in November. Yes, I am so excited. Yay. That's like the best time of year to be outside enjoying the weather. That's true. In Texas, that's very true. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's been really, it's been really very, very hot. It has. Um, and then where are, your other, where are your other visits going to be? In Brennan? Labor Day weekend, yes. There is... Um, a historical portion of downtown in Brennan, Texas, and there's a, um, the Ann Street Inn, and they're having a book festival. Nice. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. I hope it's well attended. I mean, people are, I think people are starting to want to get out. Mm -hmm. 
they're still very careful and that's important. Everybody needs to be very, very careful until, you know, till we get more word on what's going on. So that's exciting. Yes. When you go in um, and, and see people and you sign books for them, um, they can always reach out to you and find um, your website. So yes. that is awesome. And I am so sorry, but we have exhausted all of our time today. It's been so fast and so fun. Well, thank you for having me. This has been a blast. Oh, God. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website. Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Rox Berkey. Indie Beacon Radio is produced by BLM Bourgeois Fathers, Mark and Guild LLC, copyright 2020. Voiceover by Randy James, Lydia Bello, and BLM Bourgeois. To be a sponsor of the show or for more information, please email us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. To be interviewed for the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com. Music Always Rejoice by Ram Cord of